Thank you for joining us today for another life-changing encounter with the Word of God. This broadcast is brought to you by Rema Chapel, a parish of the redeemed Christian Church of God. You're welcome to a center of transformation and a love-filled environment you can call home. Our vision is to build lives with the Word to impact our world. God has a word for you and especially prepared his servant to share this message with you. We hope this message blesses and equips you to triumph in life, impact your world, and fulfill purpose. Now, let's dive into the message. I'll be bringing you a short charge, and I trust God to help me in 10 minutes. (laughs) And this will be my text. Please, I really want you to to put your attention on this altar because I want to share something that is very important. Please. At some point, if we need to close the door at the back, I would love you to help me close it just to minimize distractions. I read Malachi 2, verse 13 to 16. This is one of the most important scriptures on the issue of marriage after the things that Jesus said. I still hear people talking. I hear voices. I hear people talking. Please, let's respect the presence of God. We'll be done soon, eh? It says, take heed to thyself. We want to look at that quick matter. And I read, it says, and this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying. So he does not regard the offering anymore, nor receive it with goodwill from your hands. But did he not make them one? Having a remnant of the Spirit... And why one? He seeks godly offsprings. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce. For it covers one with garments or ga- with garments of violence. It covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. Oftentimes, when people read this scripture, we have a tendency to focus on just one word, and we abandon the other parts. And guess what that word is? Divorce. But I realize that, interestingly, in this text, there are more issues that God put even a higher emphasis on than the divorce. Focusing on the problem just by itself, will not give you a solution. In this text, the Lord does not just tell us what he does not like. He goes on to open our eyes to what he considers to be a root problem to this issue that results in crisis in the home. Our wonderful people have taken my notes. Okay. (laughs) Is here. And I want us to look at what the Lord is saying in this text. He said, Take heed unto yourself. Take heed unto yourself. According to God's wisdom, coded in this profound scripture, 
the primary reason or the number one culprit that brings trouble and crisis into homes is a person called self. Self. This speaks of the self-centered and selfish nature. The old sinful nature. That is the number one culprit of crisis and troubles in the home. In this text, the Lord does not even mention Satan. In this text, in-laws are not mentioned. In this text, lack of money is not even mentioned. But there is a thing that is mentioned twice. He says, do what? Take heed to thyself. Watch yourself. Guard your heart. To nail the, the emphasis and the criticality of this text, I feel led to share some personal experiences. I wish, I don't know if my wife is here. She, okay, she's at the back. Please, I would expect that you come and participate in the sharing of these experiences. The first thing I want you to note, I share an experience 2014, 2015. We are dealing with guarding your heart. As a person, I'm quite very sensitive to the waste of food. And that sensitivity comes from a point of pain and suffering that I've experienced for a brief moment. And so I don't like food being wasted. You can have all you want, but you must finish it. It must not be wasted. So, 2015, something happened. I don't know, maybe my wife, looking backwards, may have, may have been having a motor problem. I don't know. But suddenly, please come and stand. <laughs> I noticed that little issue She'll be holding an egg, the egg will just fall. And it happened once, two, three, four. At a point in time, I was getting, you know, sort of irritated. How can we be wasting food like this? I couldn't just get it. But one day, she had gone for rehearsal, I was just in the house. And I, I got into this complaining mode, this resentment mode. It's darkness. And I was just speaking in my mind. I didn't say anything out. Nobody was in there. It was just me, maybe the child, and the Holy Spirit. And so I went to the fridge to get some chicken a big bowl of chicken. As I was holding the thing, the thing just scattered. And the Holy Spirit said, have you seen that you also, you also, you see what you are doing? And then he spoke in a way I would never forget. He said, don't ever Allow this trend of thought again in your mind. And I look at the scripture, the Lord is saying, take heed to yourself. I share a second experience that happened even before this experience. 2012. One day, the Lord just showed me a vision of the night. And we're having a serious quarrel in that vision. When I woke up, I said, ah, I've never seen my father and my mother quarrel. This cannot be me. I just threw the dream aside. It happened, the same dream came again in another version. A few days after. At that point, I said, I better humble myself and seek help. So I called my wife. I said, this is what I'm seeing. 
and we humbled ourselves to fast and to pray. Shortly after that, an interesting scenario just played out in the house. I used to work and maintain the Edmonton International Airport infrastructure. And so we would do a lot of our work in the night because of the airlines going to US. After doing that work, you come back to the house, you go back again to work as early as 11, 12 noon. And by the time I eventually came back to the house around 5, I was exhausted. And there was a church program to hold by 6. I was tired. I wasn't just interested in going to the church that day. But my wife was like, we have to go to this church. Why are you just, you know, lazing around? She didn't say that, but I interpret it that way. <laughs> Why are you just, we need to get to the church. I was wondering, I said, I, I didn't sleep in the night. Oh. I still went to work in the afternoon. Have mercy. But I think she really needed to be in that service. And so, because of the choir. <laughs> so that day, I got to the washroom just to wash my face to try to gain consciousness. And my wife walked into that washroom. I'd never seen it happen before. There was a kind of anger and her eyes really turned. Since then, it has never happened. And there's something about me. I don't like to be oppressed. Give me my space, you leave your space, but don't oppress me. That day, my natural person, I knew that there would have been an explosion. But something happened. An invisible hand I cannot explain at that very moment rested on me. And it was as if cold water was poured all day. It's as if someone took a syringe and extracted every bit of anger and self. I knew that something supernatural had just happened there because this is not me. Two days after, an elderly relative called. And the first question she asks my wife is, did your husband beat you? It was a satanic attack. But what I want you to see in that story is that even Satan cannot walk without the cooperation of Mr. Self. Satan is never an issue. A hand came that day and extracted Mr. Self. It's as if I just became weak. I died that day. I couldn't react. And when we looked backwards, we saw that actually there was an evil visitation that day. As we wrap up this exhortation, I leave you with a word. A wise man said, and I quote, a good marriage is made up of a wedding and two funerals. I repeat, a good marriage is made up of what? A wedding and two funerals. By the very configuration of marriage, marriage is very brutal on the self. By the way God configured it, it is brutal on Mr. Self. And so for there to be peace in the home, Mr. Self has to die. Amen. In fact, when I look at the scripture, I realize that actually when you are getting married, you are actually signing up for death. Somebody's afraid. When you are getting married, you are actually signing up for death. But this is not an ordinary death. This is a death that brings a new form of life. Amen. Someone says, where is my evidence? Ephesians 5. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And what happened after that? He gave. That's he died. 
The reason for the commotion in a lot of homes, please don't blame Satan. Don't blame demons. The first person is yourself. This has been the ancient wisdom of God from the days of Malachi. Take heed to your spirit. I love us to rise in prayer. As we welcome Pastor Kunle to take us in the prayers for families. Amen. Please let's clap for him. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the message. We hope you were blessed and are ready to run with the word. Our goal is to build you with the word of God so you can impact your world. This broadcast was made possible through the support of our partners. Please visit our website at www.theremachapel.ca to see our service offerings, join us in any of our live events, and to learn about how you can partner with us. Thank you and God bless.